are walking simulators video games. Hi, I'm Mad Curious, and I want to apologize for what you just watched. We're about to take a question that's been circulating in gaming for a while and put her straight to bed. Tuck her in, say goodnight, and move along together as gamers. Are walking sims real video games? I want to tease something to the gamers watching this. There's something I'm going to share with you in this video that is going to surprise you. A connection with Gone Home to a game you definitely won't expect. Try to guess which game, and let me know in the comments if you got it right. Also, everyone knows I'm going to spoil Gone Home. You can literally play it in an hour if you don't want spoilers. So spoilers in three, two, one. So you're probably wondering what on earth that montage was and how does it relate? That reflected exactly how I felt about Gone Home at first. Soundtrack dissonance and Ludo narrative dissonance. Conf confusion. I asked myself if what they had done in one of the first modern walking sims was worthwhile to the gaming industry at all this two hour surface level story with such low interaction that there are hardly any mechanics to even judge. Could we even consider this a video game? Let's break Gone Home down by the gameplay elements and the dissonance that occurs between them in the narrative, the story, and the message that Gone Home is attempting to get across. The intersection between all of these important elements of a game is where we find the answer to whether or not Gone Home qualifies as a game. This only needs a one-line summary. We get home to an empty house and observe the items inside to piece together where our sister hid her journal from our parents, for us alone to find in which she explains why she isn't there. Gameplay elements. Gameplay that makes you figure it out can be fun, but when it doesn't make sense, you need to dive straight into the deep end of escapism in order to keep immersion. And in a game that prides itself on being an environmental mystery, the environment is hardly realistic. This isn't inherently an issue, but when the mystery turns out to be a coming of age story, you'd think it would be based in some realistic gameplay. However, as we interact with the environment, when we interact with certain objects that Gone Home determines are meaningful, we unlock audio diaries from our sister. Yet we don't have that audio diary. There is no audio diary. We find that at the very end of the game, and it's a real tangible journal. And we open that journal, presumably to read all of these entries, explaining why our sister isn't here to greet us. There's no logical explanation as to why we're hearing those journal entries as we move throughout the house picking up items. It's lovely emotionally, and I enjoyed it, but it broke immersion. Especially with the story being so grounded in reality, it was strange to have some of the most crucial gameplay elements be so far removed from reality. I appreciated that they had some symbolic reference to where we found each entry, such as an entry that about starting school being triggered by finding something within a backpack. Yet the use of symbolism was so surface level. It didn't help my immersion in the least. There were a lot of mundane objects to pick up throughout the game. In fact, I made it my personal mission to throw everything on the ground. It seemed as though there could have been a message about appreciating the mundane, or since our playable character was a blank slate, there could have been a message about how we insert our own personal biases into what we observe in others' personal spaces. They have two milk. Why do they have two milks? Ew, what's wrong with them? Yet none of those things happen. Instead, the only objects throughout the house with any meaningful details were pieces of the puzzle for the mystery to solve where these characters had gone. Turns out the parents were having marital issues and had gone to a couple's retreat disguised as an anniversary trip and our sister had run away. That was a pretty interesting part of Gone Home. I enjoyed finding those things out. I enjoyed the mystery, but the gameplay was in no way harmonious with these personal stories. Yeah, this is new, all right. Oh no, why is this game scary? It's not scary. It's not scary. It just feels scary. The whole atmosphere is scary, even though there's apparently no jump scares at all whatsoever. I really thought the family was gonna be murdered or something. And they're like, that's not the game. And I was like, no, it feels like there's a murder here. Or that they like actually went against her wishes, tried to go pick her up and like they died on the rainy streets. And they're like, no, that's not it either. And I'm like, okay, well, it's what it feels like. I described to a friend that the way Gone Home made me feel was like shredded cheese on pancakes. Elements that can be wonderful apart, but weird together. It doesn't make sense. It's funny, Gone Home actually foreshadows its failure to have cohesion between the gameplay and narrative as a parallel to the quote unquote failure writer father in the story. The father feels like a failure because he looked for outward validation from his father for his writing and shifted his writing into something that wasn't authentic to him rather than focusing on writing a cohesive story with a powerful message. 
His motivation is evidenced by the details of his heavy drinking and failing marriage. We know that he continued down a path of writing for validation rather than writing for the art of it because of the reviews on the back of his first novel, Verse, his sequel. On his first novel, there's a review that states, not just another James Bond. On his sequel, there's a review that states, a James Bond for today's audience. Now, why does that matter? Not just another James Bond implies that it is something even better. But the second one's the same, but a different version of a pop culture reference. He's lost sight on whatever had made his writing unique. It implies that there's not as much depth and power to what he wrote. This is a perfect foreshadow for the context that I will give you on why Gone Home even exists. Some of y'all are about to get mad at me, but Gone Home is a lot like a Marvel movie. I'm sorry, what? I personally don't much enjoy Marvel movies. If I want full escapism, putting all reality on hold and not really wanting to use much of my brain, yeah, I might watch Spider-Man. I'm gonna feel happy watching it. I'm gonna feel happy with the inevitable, mostly happy ending. Hey, but Thanos in the depth of the theme where we discuss if humanity is even worth saving. All right, all right. The message isn't the problem. It's that there's not much depth to how they're telling most of the stories in the Marvel universe. Please, for the, the please, please, please do not destroy me in the comments for this. We're all allowed our opinions. I like the popcorn too sometimes. However, anybody who likes to put a lot of thought into what they're watching knows that in the Marvel universe, there isn't a ton of character arc because heroes journey stories don't generally have a ton of that. There's no literary nuance. Most of the characters at the end of any Marvel movie are in exactly the same mindset as they started in. I'll use my power to help others. The ones that break the mold, that's where it gets interesting. Why? Because they're more realistic. In real life, no one wakes up in the morning and their main goal is to be good or evil. That's not how life works. Every person has their own desires. Every one of those heroes that has the goal of helping others because of a personal desire for something else. Every decision that we make is driven by our personal motivations. It's not selfishness, it's the reality of being a human. We only live within our own mind, and that is the only thing that we have any real control over. So when there's no character depth, there's no real human story. It's just relaying a series of events. By definition, a story is a series of related events. That is the minimum viable story. A story doesn't need to seek sharing a life-changing question told through allegorical elements such as symbolic composition and cinematic elements or powerful character development. While I prefer that, many others prefer things that go boom. And don't get me wrong, if you make things go boom in my life-changing story, I'm very happy. There's no one right way to tell a story. Everything is subjective. So this story, Gone Home, is one that I almost skipped from this project entirely. Which is funny because it came up a lot in my research about some of the most meaningful games in gaming history. Here's what ChatGPT told me most people loved about this game. The game has received critical acclaim for its unique storytelling approach and immersive atmosphere. It has been praised for its focus on narrative and character development, as well as its use of environmental storytelling to convey the game's themes. I strongly disagree with a lot of that, but presumably Chat GPT got this description based on reviews of the game, so I might be in the minority there. People were often impressed by the emotions they felt and that it subverted those expectations to give us a happy gay romance. So let's break down the perceptions of this story in an effort to derive its message and thus its relevance, which will define what type of art Gone Home is. Gone Home did contain a unique storytelling approach. It gave us non-linear puzzle pieces surrounded by the mundane by way of a blank slate character in which we could inject meaning however we saw fit. However, the atmosphere and environmental storytelling was the opposite of immersive to me. That scared me. I was thrown off by the dissonance between the sound effects, the mundane gameplay, the mystery puzzle, and the actual story. There was narrative development and it told a series of events for multiple characters and it did so with a unique approach. However, there was no character development. Those who think that probably have a misunderstanding of what character development is. Character development is shown through all of the details that make us human. And when those details, our thoughts, beliefs, and values shift, we come to realizations with those internal changes or development. What occurred in in this story was a series of reveals, not a singular revelation. We were only given the external changes, not a singular internal character change from which to derive any development. Unconvinced? 
I loved and enjoyed the story they told. The story was emotional, but ultimately had no point. And that's because the coming out story was there to stand out. It was a coming out story without any character development, without any greater question about how to handle being in a society that doesn't approve of your love, without any context as to what struggles or beauty lies ahead. It didn't ask us a single question because as much as it could have been great, Sam's love story was never the point. It wasn't there to be a thought provoking experience. It was there to be an attention grab. We can have a story that doesn't need to say anything about the gay experience. The thing is, what's so celebrated is the romantic gay story. And it is celebrated, yet it has nothing to say. I think people are afraid to state that diversification can be used in order to make sales. Ask yourself for a second, if this romantic line wasn't LGBTQ+, would there be any point you can tell a beautiful, emotionally resonating story and it still be virtue signaling. Our playable character's goal is to find her family. She finds her family. We don't know anything really that goes on through her mindset. She's a blank slate character. The symbolism of her emotions, however, are found in the sound effects, the flickering lights to mirror her trepidation, but it doesn't actually change in the end when she discovers that her parents and her sister are safe. So it doesn't do a very good job of conveying her emotions effectively, if that's what it's meant to do. Now for our other main character, our sister Sam, she has two goals. One, to explain to her sister why she's not there. Two, to feel at home. Now, where did I get these? They came from her letters. The first and last letters from her are nearly exactly the same message and explain that she is safe and she's sorry that she's not there to greet her sister, Katie. The rest of the letters provide context, but there's no actual shift between the beginning and the end. But of course, she probably wrote those right around the same time because she wrote the end of her journal and then she wrote the letter that she put on the door for her sister. Both of those were probably not as far apart as say the one that was at the very beginning chronologically of her journey to get to where she ran away. So let's look at that one. Dear Katie, so much has changed, even just since you've been away. We moved into this house. I'm in a new school, and my big sister being gone for a year doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't feel real, but I'm not going to let it phase me. I used to tell you everything, and if I can't do it in person, because you're off gallivanting around who knows where, I'll tell it to this journal just like I was talking to you. In the last letter, she's made a decision and found a place and a person who make her feel less lonely and less nervous and make her feel at home. Katie, I'm so sorry that I can't be there to see you in person, that I can't tell you all this myself. But I hope as you read this journal and you think back, that you'll understand why I had to do what I did and that you won't be sad, and you won't hate me, and you'll just know that I am where I need to be. I love you so much, Katie. I'll see you again, someday. Love, Sam. Which is all she wanted in that first letter at the beginning. So there is story development, and we get to see the character through an emotional journey. But that doesn't mean that there's character development, that her values shifted, that what she wanted shifted. None of that actually happened, but she did achieve her goal. So the story did progress. What that means is it wasn't just our playable character that has gone home. It is this girl, Sam, who found love in spite of anyone else's opinion of it and has gone from home to have it. The old home is gone. The message here was hard to find. Gone Home is a story that asks, what is home? That is our life's biggest question in this series about that. And the way that they made this so back of mind is why I almost removed Gone Home from this list entirely. They named it Gone Home. They made the very limited journey of this to be all about a girl finding her sense of home. While we find out where everyone is for the playable character that has come home, we get a blank slate so that we can be a casual observer to how others live within what they considered a home. Yet not a single review that I read in the dozens, from casual Steam reviews to professional critic reviews, not a single one discussed this being the point of the game. It's in the name, yet we all missed it. It took me a bit to decipher this, even though it's so surface level that it's right there. 
We went over the chat GPT description. People liked this game because they enjoyed their emotional journey with it. It's about how the game made them feel and how they felt had nothing to do with the main message. The reason for this is because of the severe dissonance among the gameplay, the story, and the message. The main story was about finding home, yet a lot of people saw it as a romance, a gay romance with a happy ending, and they felt that. Dear Sam, I am so happy you liked the drawing. I was thinking of you when I drew it. I knew you'd be able to tell. You'd love Mexico, I think, probably. The nature here is totally different than back home. I keep thinking about Allegra and the first mate lost on a mysterious island where even the plants are out to get them. And I think of them together out there in the wilderness. Together, say together one more time. And I start thinking of you again. I lie here in bed and I can almost feel okay we're getting into it i've been trying to save up for when we're together again i haven't done a good job okay but i tried our walking simulators video games they felt the emotions during that journey the confusion and everything that sam was feeling within those journal entries and it was powerful but it wasn't the main message and it had very little to do with the main message. This inherently isn't an issue, but when everything is mismatched, when there is dissonance all across the board, you have to ask yourself, what was the point? These elements together make Gone Home have very little relevance as a game. It has emotional resonance, but it doesn't have a whole lot else. Why is that? It's because that's what the details pointed towards. The setting focused on the emotional journey and mimicked a journey towards finding home, but not finding romance. The storm, the flickering lights. What part of that says romantic love story? What part of that says romantic gay love story? The symbolism was not coherent. And because they were purposefully trying to hide the message, the gameplay focused on the mundane. So that added yet another element that didn't quite make sense. And it didn't harmonize with the rest of the elements. On top of all of that, there was minimalistic interaction, which once again, doesn't necessarily drive the point of what is home, home. So what were the creators doing? Why did they make Gone Home so nebulous? To the extent that people mistook the confusion they felt for subtlety and nuance. It's because the creators designed it that way. This game was built quickly as a do or die project for a new company that had left the Bioshock team. As I dove down into the Ludo narrative dissonance rabbit hole, I learned that not only is Bioshock the game that this team came from, where Ludo narrative dissonance originated from, and one of the only games that it actually exists in to any meaningful degree, but that Gone Home is actually in the same universe as Bioshock. The team that left Bioshock to make this game made some of the same mistakes as the team that they'd been on before and had wanted to make a name for themselves. I'll link sources in the description for the story behind the development of this game so you can read further if you'd like. There's nothing inherently wrong with wanting to be heard. But once you understand that that was their purpose, you understand why some people hardly even considered Gone Home a game. Once you realize that Gone Home isn't about the special and emotional narrative or the unique gameplay, but in doing something unique in and of itself, you realize that you and I, as the player, were never the target audience of Gone Home. Gone Home wasn't built to be a great story or a great game. It was built to be the best they could with the resources that they had as quickly as they could after coming from a game that also stood out in gaming history and they wanted to stand out. The team behind Gone Home wanted to speak more to the gaming industry than it wanted to speak to the player. That's why the clarity is lost. The message is still there in the title, but everything that supports that message is hidden underneath their intention to speak to the gaming industry. They wanted to say, hey, our game is different. We told a story with amazing detail about what it feels like to realize that you're gay and how those interactions are in a time and a place where being so creates a crushing atmosphere of oppression. We created a setting that will tingle and massage your nostalgia senses that had horror elements as a setup and subverted expectations for the shock value of a happy ending. And we showed off what a game can be at its bare minimum of interactivity. That's why Gone Home, at times, to many of us, barely feels like a game. A video game is, by definition, interacting with a computer program in which you electronically manipulate images produced by the computer. So yes, a walking simulator is a real game. However, those of you who don't agree that walking simulators are video games, there is validity to the argument that you are making. You don't think a walking simulator is a game because it doesn't qualify as a game to you. And that is 
is true and no video of someone reading a definition is going to change that for you. I don't think that Gone Home is worthy of relevance in the gaming industry because of its dissonance. Whereas you may not think that it's worthy of relevance because of its minimalistic take on gaming elements. You see, when we're asking whether a walking simulator is a video game, we're asking the wrong question. That question is suggesting we focus on the minimum of what a video game is. And the answer to that is simply interaction with objects on a screen. Here's where the message of Gone Home actually parallels the concept of what a video game is. The reason this is even an argument at all is the same way Sam and Katie's parents did in this game and tried to control her home. And yes, she's only barely about to be an adult and parents have some control over a child's life until adulthood. But it's likely that these parents would continue to push their ideals onto their daughter even once she's an adult. They want their children to share their ideals of love and how they should run their own homes because they mistake their definition as the only definition. The real answer to whether Gone Home is a video game is the exact same answer as to whether your home is a house perspective. It's not whether it is a game, but whether it matters to you that it is a game. And to me, Gone Home's focus on the gaming industry as their target audience significantly decreased the relevance of what could have been one of the most meaningful games in gaming history. Gone Home marked its spot in the gaming industry as a leader for the influence of walking simulators, but it missed its mark with someone who should have been the exact target audience of this game. What's the use of being heard if you have nothing to say? or if you sacrifice what you have to say in order to be heard. You see, as we open the journal to learn that our sister has found where home is to her, we close the game to find out where a game is to us. And both paths lead to one answer, that we don't need as much as we think. The minimal definition of a story or a game or a home doesn't change. We decide what else we want added onto the minimum, and we don't need to push our desired parts of any of those onto anyone else. I value a story that has character development and deeper meaning, and I enjoyed the gameplay elements of a non-linear, exploratory puzzle mixed with options of what to observe of the mundane. Someone else might have enjoyed the story because they don't value cohesion and resonance. They value escapism, but maybe in the gameplay, they might have preferred that there was more interactivity. A story can be a series of events with a happy and simple ending. A home can be a car with the person you love. A game can be a walking simulator with a couple of hours of exploration. We build upon the minimum definitions to define where we want our stories, our games, and our homes to be. And we don't need to control anyone else's decisions in the matter. All that matters is that we find what is ours. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, know that I have so much more to come. And every single one of you who like and subscribe, help me to continue making these. I also have a Patreon if you want even more of my creations. I'll see you in the next one.